You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. A Super Smiley Adventure is brought to you by State Farm. I'm Smiley the dog. I am a vet. I'm Smiley the dog. I'm Super Smiley. I am a cat too sweet to travel kitty. I'm a girlfriend. Ain't really pretty. I will go where you share a big horse. We have a big dog. Yeah, we have to of course. I will go in the summer. I stay in the winter. I will go where you share a big horse. We have a big dog. Yeah, we have to of course. I will go in the summer. I stay in the winter. I will go where you share a big horse. We have a big dog. Yeah, we have to of course. I will go in the summer. I stay in the winter. I will go where you share a big horse. We have a big dog. Yeah, we have to of course. I will go in the summer. I stay in the winter. I will go where you share a big horse. Wolf and Super Smiles, welcome to a Super Smiley Adventure on Pet Life Radio, the largest pet radio network in the world. I'm Megan Blake, the pet lifestyle coach, here with my possum co host, two time shelter dog, Super Smiley, the ambassador of kindness for State Farm, our amazing national sponsor. As the pet lifestyle coach, I travel the country with Smiley, helping people adopt the right pet for their lifestyle and then help train them so they keep that pet forever. And here on a Super Smiley Adventure, we explore adventures where animals lead. These can be adventures for fun or missions of animal advocacy or inner journeys of self-discovery where our pets sometimes become our healers and teachers. And all of these paths converge today with our six highly distinguished guests. And we may be setting a world record for having the most guests on a radio show at one time. We've got six guests today. And if you count Super Smiley and me and all the dogs with us, that's at least 11 of us. Hey, everybody. Hello. 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 (laughs) So what could bring Animal Planet's Victoria Stilwell, State Farm's Public Affairs Specialist Heather Paul, and the human stewards of five elite canines here today? Only one thing, the amazing, whimsical, and powerful State Farm Canine Assist Team Starting Five. This was created by the super creative and dog-loving State Farm Public Affairs Specialist Heather Paul. Welcome, Heather. Thank you, Megan. Uh, can I tell you that this is like the best thing of my entire week is getting to <laughs> a chance to be on the call with these. I mean, just my heroes. My uh-huh. heroes are the as everybody that is involved with the Canine Assist team. Oh, well, Heather, thank you for creating this. Thank you for putting this together. And this elite canine team has a super elite, world-class coach, Animal Planet, the Victoria Stilwell. Hi, Victoria. Hello. Hello. And we also have the 2013 Hero Dog winner and therapy dog, Ellie, is here with her person, Leah Brewer. Hi, Leah. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. And military. Oh, Leah, you are so welcome. We're so happy that you and Ellie are here with us. And we have military dog, the true defender of freedom. Alik is represented by his person, Ruby Ridpath. Welcome, Ruby. Oh, thank you so much. It's wonderful to be with everyone this morning and be a part of this team. Very, very cool. And service dog Jasper joins us with his person, Luca. Hi, Luca. Uh, Hi, thanks for having me. You're so welcome. And then we have shelter dog Zena is the 2013 ASPCA Dog of the Year and the 2014 Emerging Hero Dog of the Year for her work with her person, Johnny, who has autism. And we are joined by Zena and Johnny's mom, Linda Hickey. Hi, Linda. Hey, thanks for having us. Oh, you're very, very welcome. We're so excited all of you are here. And then, we, of course, we have Super Smiley. Super Smiley, you're on this Elite Canine Assist team as the Ambassador of Kindness. And we want to hear from each of you about service dogs, therapy dogs, military dogs. But first, Heather Paul from State Farm. Will you set this up for our listeners so they understand what this is? Because this is a complete out-of-the-box campaign based on a genius, super fun State Farm commercial and campaign, right? Fill us in. Absolutely. You know, we've got a great... You- can't watch a, a sporting event anymore without seeing State Farm on the backboard or <laughs> right. you know in the outfield or anything else. And so we've had we've been working with LA Clippers basketball star Chris Paul for several years on on doing a, an assist team where he has other heroes in the basketball world that are helping State Farm to assist people when recovering from the unexpected. So we said, you know, we've got some really really incredible heroes that are in the canine world. Let's create a canine assist team. And it took us. <laughs> <laughs> like a week after we did that to realize that the acronym, ironically, was CAT. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, this, this has, has helped us to highlight the really, really wonderful things that humans and dogs are able to do together. And, and we've sponsored arson dogs, which are accelerant detection canines, for 23 years at State Farm, which wow, are really so amazing heroes. But there's so many other types of working dogs out there. And 
And we just wanted to be able to draw attention to that and show the really great relationship that humans and dogs can have together and the impact that they can make in communities. It is such an important impact and a huge impact. So Heather and State Farm, thank you so much for bringing us together. So together we can all highlight this. And we have the amazing Victoria Stillwell. Victoria, first, we are so happy that you're back with us on a super smiley adventure with your extremely busy schedule. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it's great to be here. And yeah, I'm very proud to be part of the uh, canine assist team. You know, not that any of these dogs need coaching, but hey, I'm proud to be the coach. Oh, yes. We love you being our coach, Victoria. And Heather mentioned the human-animal bond. How does this team speak to the human-animal bond? Would you enlighten us on that, please? I really do think it shows with the power of these animals and what they can do for us. And, you know, you treat them right. You treat them with kindness. It's going to come back to you a thousandfold. These dogs, we have such an amazing relationship with them. Thousands of years of evolution, these dogs have come into our lives and have evolved with us and adapted with us. And it just truly shows the amazing things that dogs can do and the power that they have to not only make us more healthy, but to make us happier. So because of all the amazing things they do for us, I make it my life's mission to try and make the world as best as I can for them too. I love it. And you're doing a wonderful, wonderful job on your mission. And I'm so excited to hear from Leah, Linda, Luca, and Ruby about what your dogs have done, not only for your families, but for the world. We're coming up on a break now. But before that break, can you each share one word or phrase of what your dog has done for you or shared with the world? Let's see. Who wants to go first? Leah, what is Ellie's gift that she shares? Well, one word would be love. Uh, In my life, in the lives of many, many others, her reading program, her safety program, her her way of helping me show that through responsible ownership, a dog is, their potential is unlimited. Kind of came up with a little saying, dogs have a love of life and deserve a life of love. I love that. And I agree. I've looked in Ellie's eyes and she is just pure love. And Ruby, yeah. what did a leak military working dog give? You know, for Alec and all of the working dogs out there, the key words to them are loyalty and selfless service. They are so loyal to their handlers and to those units and those that they are protecting. And they give of themselves selflessly for the best years of their lives. I There's love that. There's nothing that can match that. Amazing. Loyalty and selfless yeah. service. Just beautiful. And Linda, how about Zena, the warrior pup for Johnny? What would Zena's word or phrase be? Well... The beginning, I would say her phrase would be from survivor to savior, and she and Mm. Johnny are spreading the word. I love this. Oh, these phrases are just giving me chills. I love it. And Luca, what's Jasper's gift to you? Probably safety because he's Mm. helped me, prevented me from falling multiple times. Safety. Actually. So that's the gift of life in a way, just keeping you safe. Yeah. This is amazing. And as for Super Smiley, he is a dog on a mission, energizing, energizing pet adoption and kindness. And and Victoria, let's bring you in on this. What do your dogs share with your family? What would their gifts be? I think their gift is the gift of love. And, yeah, um, like Leah. That's yeah. it. That's it for me. Yep, like Ellie. And Heather, how do your dogs inspire you? Let's make your question a little bit broader. How did your dogs help inspire you with creating this campaign, Heather? Because this is this is quite amazing what you've done here. You know, I grew up on a farm in Iowa, so we always had uh-huh. dogs. And my dogs that I have now, McKenna and Yoshi, are not only <laughs> unconditional love and loyalty, but family. You mm-hmm. know, these are truly members of my family. And, you know, when I travel and come home, that is what really solidifies me are my pets. Because as soon as I'm home, man, they're on my lap. They're licking me. They know. And that is probably the most important thing in my life. When they're not eating their own poop. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to talk to, I, you. I, need, to, I need to talk to Victoria about that one too. <laughs> I love this. I love this. We've got safety, love, loyalty, service, energizing, energy, fun, happy. We're going to hear more about these dogs and their work right after this break. Smiley, can you wait? Good boy. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back. Right after we kibble a little with our sponsors. State Farm, this is Andrea. Yeah, what if I get into an accident in, say, Accident, Arkansas? Anywhere in the U.S., State Farm has you covered. Uh Uh-huh, and if I hit the only tree in Lone Pine, California? We'll send a tow truck right over. What if I get 
dinged in Denton. North Carolina or Texas? Uh, both. Then we'll send two trucks. Well played. State Farm handles more claims than any other company. Over 35,000 per day. Call 1-800-STATE-FARM and get to a better state. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with the amazing animal planets, Victoria Stilwell, Heather Paul from State Farm with our fantastic program here and the elite canine assist team starting five consisting of Leah Brewer and Pitbull Ellie, Luca and Jasper, Linda Hickey with Xena. Super Smiley is representing today as the ambassador of kindness for State Farm and Ruby Ridpath is here for military dog Alik. And Ruby, let's start with you. We honor our military working dogs in this country so much and we so honor Alik's contribution and Alik passed away recently. And first, we offer our deepest condolences for your loss. Tell us more about his service. Uh, Leek uh, was a German Shepherd. He served for almost eight years with the United States Air Force and Security Forces as a patrol explosive detector dog. He had one special thing about him that everybody remembers, and that's his ears. They do not stand up straight like all German Shepherds. His pointed to the center like a teepee. (laughs) And everybody remembers his face by calling him wonky ears or teepee ears. But Alik, they have been unable to tell me all of his service history, which I guess I don't have security clearance for that. Uh, Um, But he was an amazing dog, you know. Now his work still continues, right? You all are doing a, there's a war dog memorial going up in your area. Tell us about that. That's right. We are here in Colorado Springs raising funds right now and going through all the final approval processes to build a war dog memorial that is going to honor all of the tens of thousands of dogs that have served so selflessly throughout history, presently and into the future. They didn't sign on the dotted line, but they serve selflessly and give their all. And these dogs, they save so many lives. They literally save our troops, right? They do. That's correct. And just historically alone, if you look at World War II, it is estimated that war dogs saved approximately 15,000 lives. In Vietnam, it's estimated that they saved around 10,000 lives. And now with Iraq and Afghanistan and the number of dogs that have been deployed throughout the duration of these wars, it's hard to really know how many lives have been saved because at the height of this, over 3,000 dogs were deployed at one time. Wow. Well, Ruby, we so honor Alik and his work and and who he represents, all of the tens of thousands of dogs that that he represents. So thank you so much for, for highlighting his work for us. And Leah and Ellie, you all do so many different things. Tell us about your work with bite prevention because State Farm is our national sponsor. They're the ones who put together this amazing canine assist team. So tell us about what Ellie does for bite prevention. Yes, bite prevention is so important as far as education and awareness. And, you know, Ellie and I are so proud to be working with State Farm and being a part of the National Dog Bite Prevention Week uh, for two years in a row now at the press club. And uh, the thing that I take away from it is, Heather said it so many times, any dog can bite. So if you practice safety around all dogs, and it's important for children, it's important for seniors, that's, that's where you need to change as far as the dog bite numbers, um, the safety with this family. And also, every dog has an individual personality. You know, with Ellie being a part of the prevention, it makes a strong statement that every dog is an individual. You can't look at one dog and think they're going to bite and look at another dog and think they're friendly. Let me just, for our listeners, let me let them know, for those who don't know, Ellie is a beautiful pit bull. She's a big, big girl. She's very, very muscular, and she's as sweet. Leah said her word was love, and that is absolutely Mm -hmm. the way I see her when I look at her. But someone who's afraid of big dogs, she might look very, very scary, and that's what you're referring to, right, Leah? So to continue, I just want our listeners to understand this. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Ellie is a a pit bull, so a lot of people view her as, 
being dangerous, but with her working with people in their community, you know, she's a registered therapy dog. She has a reading program. Kids uh, <laughs> so really master their reading skills yeah. with her. And, uh, you know, we work with law enforcement. We work with the, the fire department. So, I mean, she does so many things in the community. And, you know, I look at her, I see a dog, of course, but some people look at her and see something totally different. So it all kind of works together with us teaching bite prevention, teaching safety skills, and letting the community know and on a national level at the press club for National Dog Bite Prevention Week every year in May. It's just really important to practice safety and to realize all dogs are individuals. Absolutely. And Victoria, you've worked with Ellie personally on these dog bite prevention programs. Can you talk a little bit more? Leah did such a great job, but we just want to hear your input, Victoria, about breeds that are perceived or labeled as bully breeds. Can you just give your thoughts on that, please? Yeah, I think, you know, whenever there's a dog bite or there's a mauling or there's there's even a death, it's always just the pit bull that's blamed when in reality, you know, a lot of these dogs aren't pit bulls at all. They're a mix of different breeds. So, but in the media if it bleeds it leads and so if you can say pit bull then uh, you're going to sell more papers so you know unfortunately these dogs have been given a label and that's affected every single one of them and unfortunately people have tried to make it they can't exist and that's what breed specific legislation is all about banning certain breeds and not uh, communities and families have to get rid of their dogs or the dogs get taken away and euthanized and, it, and it's terrible because it really is saying that every single dog that is of a bully breed from a boxer to a pit bull is dangerous and we know I mean the reality is that that is just not true right Um, it really depends on any dog as I said before any dog can be a great dog regardless of breed and any dog can have issues regardless of breed it's the way that they're bred the way that they're raised the way they're treated the way they're socialized so Mm -hmm. always we need to be not looking at the breed of dog but we really need to be concentrating more at the other end of the leash the human the, the, the person that has the dog and um spreading awareness about or educating people about being responsible. Very well right. said, Victoria. Very well said. And, and Heather, State Farm put all of this together and put together the Bite Prevention Program. State Farm does so many things for animals and many people don't realize what a strong advocate for dogs State Farm is. Can you tell our listeners a little more about what State Farm does with dogs? Absolutely. You know, I mentioned that my dogs, I see my dogs as family and I like to think yes. that State Farm views dogs as family members as well. And, and I love we that. Talk, <laughs> we talk about protecting your family and your assets and the things that are most important in your life and pets are that as well. And as we've heard several times now, that it doesn't matter what your dog looks like. It doesn't matter what breed your dog is. You know, it frustrates me when I, you hear somebody say, it's, well, a pit bull mix bit somebody. Well, what made that day that the pit bull side of that mixed dog decide they're going to bite versus the lab or, right, right. you know, anything mm-hmm. else? You know, so let's look at dogs as individuals and say, what can we do to make sure that they're successful? We do that with our children. Let's do that with our dogs. Let's put them in a positive environment and look out for their best interest because that's what we should do as our caregivers. Mm -hmm. In return for that, as you've already started to hear and will continue to hear, those dogs will do incredible things for us and with us and be part of our lives. Absolutely. I love that, that, Heather. And speaking of doing incredible things in life, Luca, Jasper has literally given you your life back, essentially. You said safety, safety. Share with us exactly what Jasper does for you and how much she means to you. I have a rare genetic condition, and so it causes me to pass out and have seizures. And I got him about nine months ago. And over the course of those nine months, he's prevented me from seeing CP probably over 150 times. And I still have seizures, but he gets me down in time so I don't get hurt. Now, explain to us, what do you mean Jasper alerts you? Does he come up and actually poke you? What, what does he do? And what do you do? Then you're able to get to a safe place and sit down. Is that what happens? Yeah, he comes up and nudges my knee, and Mm -hmm. sometimes I don't notice it right away, and if I don't notice it, he gets more persistent, and sometimes he'll even stop walking and not move, not listen, and then I know for sure that I need to lay down, and I check my heart rate, and most of the time, it's over 140, and so at first, when I first got him, he would alert at like 110, so Mm -hmm. it was like 
constant. Like he would alert multiple times a day, but now he's learned what's unsafe for me and what is safe. So it's calmed down. So I get alerted probably every other day now. Luca, so are you saying that Jasper can actually detect, he can sense when your heart rate is too high just from his senses? Is that right? Yeah, that's what they believe. They think that they can. Wow. That is amazing, amazing. And and Jasper, he's an incredible dog, but he is just a representative of so many dogs in the world that are helping people like you, Luca. So thank you so much for sharing what dogs can do through Jasper. Thank you so much. And Linda, I know that you can relate to Luca's story with your own personal experience with Zena and with Johnny. Can you tell us about how Zena impacted your family when Zena arrived? Oh, I sure can. You know, we already had two dogs when we adopted Zena, and we had a Labrador and a Mini Dachshund, and my son has autism. He was eight years old at the time when we adopted Zena, and there was actually no connection between he and my two other dogs. And I put her in the car to pick up Johnny from school, and the moment he entered the van, it was like magical. And he was smiles from ear to ear. She was licking him all over his face. And you know, I actually parked the car in the parking lot that day through Car Rider because I was in disbelief. The words that were freely coming out of my son's mouth where it took therapists and teachers and family members to try to extract anything out of my kiddo, all of a sudden here this puppy is in his lap and he is just talking nonstop. And and Linda, I want to make sure the audience understands that Johnny had been diagnosed as being autistic, so he basically didn't talk. I just want to make sure that's very, very clear. So this was like, almost like you're witnessing a little miracle. Is that right? That's what, oh, there's no doubt it was a miracle. No doubt. Mm-hmm. You know, we have spent thousands of dollars in therapy and speech, occupational, all of it, you know. And here I bring in this little pit bull pup, and she made all the difference in the world. That's amazing. Thank you, Linda, for joining us today. And and let me tell everybody about Super Smiley. He's the ambassador of kindness for the canine assist team. And this all started when I first got him. I remember Super Smiley, he's a big dog. And right after I got him, one of those sad commercials for pet adoption came on television. He crawled up into my lap and stared into my eyes. And it's like I heard him say, we need a happy campaign for pet adoption. No one's going to pay attention to this sad commercial. And while he was in my lap staring at me, I started hearing this little song in my head. I'm Smiley the dog. I am a mutt. I'm Smiley the dog, which is our intro bumper music. <laughs> and um, I got a recorder and I recorded it right then as it downloaded from Smiley. And I thought this would make a great flash mob for pet adoption. So we started the Super Smiley Flash Mob for Pet Adoption Tour across the United States. And then our videos of Flash Mob turned into little films. I call them dogumentaries. And we started winning film festivals. And then we turned that into a humane education program for kindness, focusing on inner city kids, teaching kids kindness and values through animals which won super smiley the ambassador of kindness award at the animal film festival and now here we're on the state farm canine assist team so we are so honored to be here and his latest film is he's on a mission to share kindness around the world and he's finding his inner mutt superhero in an animated film where he's flying through the air in his red cape so we invite everybody to watch that and share that and thank you state farm and victoria for supporting super smiley's inner Intermut superhero for kindness video and and Heather back to Heather the canine assist team video speaking of videos the canine assist team video is so cute and where is it so people can go see it let us know well they can go to our the State Farm website at goodneighbors.com uh, good yes. neighbors is a special site where State Farm is sharing great stories inspirational stories about things that people are doing in their community. It doesn't have to have a direct state from connection. But, you know, we have enough negativity going on in this world, so it's always wonderful to see and read about people that are making a change. And whether it's it's people through working with dogs, whether it's impacting um, programs or issues in their community, it's all about sharing that good work and sharing the amazing things and those heroes that are in our community. So if you go to goodneighbors.com, you can either type in in the search you can type in canine assist team you could type in dog and see a number of different stories uh, that we have written about dogs as well as our arson dog program I love this. I love the Good Neighbor site. Everybody knows like a good neighbor. State Farm is there, so that's easy <laughs> easy to remember. <laughs> com, and there's really, really, really good news there. Um, happy news 
And like you said, you can type in in the search also in looking for it and Googling it, the particular link. I, I saw that if you put in super smiley canine assist team, spell out the word canine, C-A-N-I-N-E, then it comes up. It's the very first search that came up. So everybody can find it and please watch it because it's super, super cute. And Victoria Stillwell's there as our coach. It's just really, really cute. And I want to hear more about what's coming up for the State Farm Canine Assist Team and with State Farm and the dogs right after this break. Smiley, can you wait? Good boy. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Remember when you swore you'd never get married, never have four bedrooms and a minivan, and never have... Twins? We're having twins? And then never happens and becomes the things you never want to be without. For all the nevers you now want to last forever, State Farm is there to help protect them with everything from life insurance to college savings and more. And that's the difference between just having insurance and having a State Farm agent. To find a State Farm agent near you, call 1-800-STATE-FARM or visit statefarm.com. Amazing Pet Expos is coming to a city near you. Admission is always free and your pet is welcome. Shopping, adoptions, free nail trims, discounted shots and microchipping, agility, a pet costume contest, and much more. Plus, meet the guys from Animal Planet's hit TV series Tank and Pit Boss online at AmazingPetExpos.com. Bring your pets to the Pet Expo. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, I'm Jane Lynch, and I'm on a super smiley adventure. Woof, woof. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with the elite State Farm Canine Assist Team, State Farm's Heather Paul and the fabulous Victoria Stillwell. And Heather, tell us about the baseball cards for each of the dogs that are here. What is that? Yeah, so we thought it would be so much fun to have each of our, you know, just like you do with sporting teams, to have (laughs) collectible cards. And the idea actually came about because, you know, with the State Farm Arson Dog Program, all of our handlers and arson dogs have baseball cards that they hand out to kids Mm -hmm. when they're talking about fire safety or uh, doing some of their demonstrations. So we thought, wow, well, how fun would it be for each of the canine assist team members to have their own baseball card? And so, uh, so. We have a creative team here who was able to put that together. Our social media team also did the video, and you know you can download them. We're also working on getting those printed off so that you guys can have cards that you can hand out. But they're just oh, that's so fun. exciting, Heather! Fun. I didn't know we that. Need- I'm so, I'm really really excited. Super smiley. He's all excited here. He wants Fantastic. a baseball card. Woo! And um, <laughs> today I just noticed that on my Facebook page, Facebook.com/slash Megan Blake Ruby had posted a leaks card, and it was so cute, Ruby. Thank Thank you for doing that. I loved it. I love seeing these cute little, little. I call them baseball cards, trading cards for our doggies. And on our show here, I know that animals are healers and teachers. So here's a question for everybody. What have you learned from your dogs? Victoria, let's start with you. What have your dogs taught you personally about life? I think they've taught me to be patient and they've taught that kind of love conquers all. They just taught me to be a better person and to be happy because, oh, you, you know, if you've had a hard day and you come in at the end of the day and they're just so happy to see you, <laughs> that, that's, I think that's what they've taught me. I love it. I love it. They do the circle tail wag, right, Victoria? They do. It's the helicopter tail. <laughs> right. Now, Leo, what has Ellie taught you personally about life? Oh, my goodness. Um and, you know, I could get emotional about this really easy because it has not been an easy road for us. Mm. Probably strength. Oh. Ellie loves everybody. Whether they don't like her, whether they hate her, she loves everybody. Strength and perseverance, you know, rising above nastiness and just seeing the love in the world and people, you know, really appreciating life gifts. And, I love uh, that, Leah. Yeah. I love yeah. that because when we look at these animals... <laughs> We do. We see the goodness and the pureness. I always say they have a purity of spirit that teaches purely that sometimes, sometimes people do live up to that, but sometimes they don't. But the dogs will always remind us to go back to that. So that was so, such a beautiful, beautiful lesson from Ellie. And Linda, what about Zena, the warrior pup? What have you learned personally from Zena? Well, there's definitely a lot of lessons I have learned from her as well. But I would say not to judge is on the top Mm. of the list. 
That's a big one. I think she's taught me patience. So has my son, but I think the two of them together have, you know, God has definitely given me patience and Mm -hmm. uh, to love unconditionally, you know. Wow, these dogs truly are healers and teachers. And Luca, we know that's the case in your circumstance. What has Jasper taught you? He's taught me to never give up because three years ago, I I had no idea what was wrong with me, why I was having seizures, why I was passing out all the time. And now here I am with a dog who can tell me 20 minutes before so I know get down and be safe and everything's completely different since I got him in in a better way so oh and Luca you're talking about never giving up I love that and all the pictures that you sent me you just look so relaxed and so happy and so just beautiful it's just the word is beautiful and I hearing you talk about Jasp I see sort of where that energy is kind of emanating from and so I congratulate you bless you with your relationship with Jasper and Ruby what about Alik I know he must have given so many lessons to the world what did he share with you personally? With me personally, Alik shared something very, very special. And it was that every day is a new day. Mm. Uh, that every day is a new day to do something for others and mm-hmm. do it selflessly. And he taught me that. And even in retirement, you know, he continues as an ambassador uh, yes. for all war dogs. Yes. And uh, on one trip with him that I took, as I'm taking him out for his evening walk, He's constantly looking around. This is my mom. I'm protecting her. He's once wow. again in that. I'm retired, but I'm giving everything I can for you. And he inspired me to keep going, you know, keep going, regardless of what life throws at you mm. every day. Keep going. We've heard that from it's several of you. Keep day. going. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, he just inspired me to look at him and say, regardless of what you went through in your years of service, you were still wanting to give, and that was give love and give to the community by spreading the word. And that's true. It is really, really true. These words that you all are saying, they might sound so lofty, but we know that these dogs walked every step of every single thing you're saying. We know it. We get it in our hearts. And Heather, what have your dogs taught you? What have you learned from them? Yeah, I would definitely say two words, peace and laughter. Um, yeah. you know, <laughs> peace because they are, they are the most peaceful creatures and they just, you get that sense anytime a dog is around you. And definitely one of the most important things to have in your life is laughter. And I know my dogs are ridiculous and I <laughs> love it because that is exactly how my household and how Aww. everybody's household here is. But yes. yeah, you know, celebrating whether they're climbing on the couch like the, you know, my pug, my pug farts all the time. And, <laughs> and that's exactly my response is laughter every single time. And it's so juvenile, but it's still, it brings a smile constantly. <laughs> yes, well, it's happy. Um, Victoria mentioned the word happy, and I always say they increase our happy chemicals. That's very scientific there, but they do. Super smiley. He super smiles. He's the one who told me that his name was supposed to be smiley. It just, it's a silly little dog name, but he literally claims named that name and I try, actually tried to name him several other names trying to think of a more you know a more fabulous name but it, we just kept coming back my dog's name is Smiley and that's just the way it is <laughs> and Smiley has taught me he's taught me to listen to animals even more because they have a type of wisdom that in my mind we just can't touch as humans I mean that we can touch but we'll never really possess it the way they do they just have a like you all have said there's a balance there's a happy there's a groundedness there's a purity there's there's just something that they have that we should listen to so Smiley's taught me to listen to these animals even more and here's another question for all of you from my story I just told you all about Smiley leading me down this path of flash mobs and therapy dog work he really does lead me on adventures so what recent adventure did your dog lead you on. Now, remember, it can be an adventure in the typical sense of a fun day or mission for advocacy or self-discovery. So, Heather, let's go back to you. Start with you. What adventure have your dogs led you on recently? You know, it's a crazy adventure. Actually, I I like to take photographs and uh, Uh I took a a picture of my German Shepherd mix, McKenna, and I was actually just last night in Barnes & Noble. The pictures I take, I like to capture the essence of a dog, you know, really Mm -hmm. just being a dog. And Uh uh, as I was walking to Barnes & Noble last night, I happened to see, look over and see a new mystery novel that had come out from a very well-known mystery novelist. And the picture of McKenna was on the cover. 
they purchased it from Getty Images, and really, so my dog is on the cover. Wow. Of, that is a, a great and but the beauty of it is that in that one picture they captured that essence. So when I saw that picture, saw the book, I looked at McKenna and I was like, I was hugging her and kissing her and going, "Oh my God, look, you're on the, a book cover!" And she immediately just ran over to the treat dish and said, "Okay, well now I need my reward," which was a handful <laughs> of treats. And I know that uh, Linda understands that, so she's got two bags of treats right now, keeping her dog quiet. Yeah, that's <laughs> I think a great we're, we're story. beyond the two bags of treats. That's amazing. Well, Linda, what adventure has Zena led you on recently? You all on, you and Johnny? Well, I don't know if you consider it an adventure. I guess it's my life adventure. You know, all yeah. my years of life, I have always wondered what my purpose was here on this earth. And it never yes. really clicked until Zena and Johnny's story. And I feel that this has been an amazing journey for us. You know, Zena and I go into schools and we teach the kids about autism and how to become friends with kiddos with autism because it is a different relationship than Mm -hmm. having with a typical peer. You know, we go to our jails and we support jail dog programs. We go to the Department of Juvenile Justice uh, to the youth center and talk to those kiddos. We raise money for Autism Speaks and autism programs. I feel like that this is my journey now, you know, and this is what this dog has done for me. I mean, she's transformed a family. She's transformed a child. She's transforming the world. That's amazing, Linda. And so, boy, she is leading you on an entire life adventure, actually, like I'm probably all these dogs are doing. It is amazing the impact that they can make. And Leah, what adventure has Ellie led you on recently? And it could even just be something for fun because I know we're all on these great missions. But where has Leah taken you lately? Uh, well, I need a uh, uh, five hours. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> no, but Linda said it per- perfectly a while ago with purpose. Yes, um, there you go. Like this inner gravity and inner push that I've been experiencing in life, not to fear living out a dream, living life in the moment. Mm-hmm. and not being afraid to act out ideas that you have. You know, mm-hmm. whether you have success or whether you fail, you always try. And we've been doing some things here in the community that probably before Ellie, I would have never even attempted, you know, to reach out to people and right. you know, try to do some programs together, try to do things together to create a better community. And, uh, you know, like with Ellie's little stop, drop, and roll that she helps the local fire department when they go to school to speak to the kids about fire safety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've got something new here with local law enforcement where we're really trying to change, creating with irresponsible ownership accountability um, to make mandatory classes where people are responsible. It's not just a word. You know, you promise it. You promise to be responsible. And I wouldn't have done this stuff. I would not have done this stuff. And I know there's a purpose. I know Ellie was put in my life for a reason. And as far as the journey, to me, it's just begun. And I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to act out on some of these ideas and these dreams I have. Whereas before Ellie, I, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have been brave. I love that. I love that. She's given you bravery on your adventure. I love that, Leah and Ellie. And Victoria, we know that your entire life, you travel the whole world. But have your dogs <laughs> led you on an adventure that you want to share with us recently? Yeah, I think they, they've they taught me that to be a better teacher. Ah, um, mm-hmm. Went to somebody's home and there's issues with their dogs. It's very easy for me to say, hey, this is what you do. You do this and you do that. And, and mm-hmm. because, I, because I've because i trained for a long time, I'm very fluid when I'm teaching dog skills and things. So it's easy for me. But I forget sometimes that, you know, I talk dog the whole time, but my clients don't. Yes. So I think yes. my dogs and maybe some of the issues that I've had with my dogs or the way I teach them has just taught me to be a better teacher to others. Not oh, just interesting. Dogs. Well, I understand. Almost like being a better communicator and dogs, they do communicate with body language and energy. And mm-hmm. to be attuned to that, we would have to become better skilled at that ourselves, right? Is that what, sort of what you're saying as well? Well, it is. But also, you know, when I'm giving a, a training class or something, I could go quite fast and yes. I could maybe think, well, why isn't that person getting this? Or why can't they do this? But I think my dogs have taught me, you know, to go slower, to be a better educator in that way. 
way to truly understand a person's process when they're teaching their dog um, or the dog's process as well, which I think every trainer needs to understand how not just dogs learn, but how human beings learn as well. And therefore, you can kind of make your time with them a lot better. Um, I love that. So right. more skills. I love that, Victoria. I love that. And Luca, what adventure has Jasper led you on lately? I know Jasper helps you in so many things in your life. Have you done something fun together recently? Um, we actually, well, Jasper pushed me and my mom to start a nonprofit to help mm. people get service dogs. Wow. Tell us about that. What's the name of it? Dog on Disabilities. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. And so where can people go to see that? Do you have a website up yet? Yeah, it's www.dogondisabilities.com. Love that, Luca. Well, congratulations on that to you and to Jasper. And Ruby, tell us about one of Alex's adventures with you. I know he had many in his life, but what's one that you want to share with us here? Yeah, they're traveling various places, but just a few weeks before we lost a lake unexpectedly, it was amazing to watch this almost 13-year-old retired war dog, Grand Marshal of Parade, a mm. Celebration of Life Parade for oh. animals. And we're sitting there before the parade, and he's lounging in the shade going, okay, yeah, what are we doing? What are we doing? Okay, you can give me love. He was just drawing love from people. Uh-huh. And I said, okay, buddy, it's time. We put his vest on him, and all of a sudden, you saw this regal, noble dog stand up. You know, right. he went from, I'm retired, love and life, to I have a job to do. I'm representing more wow. dogs. And do him stand tall and take his place as Grand Marshal in the parade with his brother in paws, our other war dog, CWD, behind him. He walked across that bridge, and as people started clapping and cheering, it was amazing to watch him, at which point the tears started flowing because I was so proud of what he was doing and his representing, and it's an adventure and a memory that was not. But most of all, after it was over, I said, okay, bud, great job. I love you. He plopped down in the shade and went, okay, scratch me. <laughs> right. So, oh, my gosh. You know, no, I, I know, Ruby. I'm still filled with emotion, though, at that scene you just painted for us that was really, really powerful. And you said that this was to commemorate dogs. What was the purpose of this parade? It was called a Celebration of Life Parade oh. for, for animals, celebrating the lives of animals and what they do in our lives. Oh, how perfect. And, and this is exactly what this show and what the Canine Assist team is about. And oh, my gosh, Alik. Thank you, Alik, at Rainbow Bridge for giving us this beautiful, beautiful message. And and for me, Super Smiley and I are on a fun adventure right now. I, I mentioned all the documentaries and the kindness programs and all that, but right now we are on a true sense adventure. We're in Kentucky shooting a movie for Hallmark. Smiley and I are both actors and <laughs> we're on this adventure. We're working with Brian Dennehy, Lee Merriweather, and Smiley is playing Raquel Welch's dog. Is that crazy? <laughs> so big shout up to the Hallmark channel. We love Hallmark and to Crown Media's CEO, Bill Abbott, right from Super Smiley, because Bill knows Super Smiley personally, and um, we love them in Hallmark. So I love the way these dogs lead us on these amazing life journeys, life missions, and just crazy adventures that we had no idea we were going to go on. So again, we invite everyone listening to please um, Google the State Farm Canine Assist Team video. Go to goodneighbors.com and you can search Search there or just Google Super Smiley Canine Assist Team and spell out C-A-N-I-N-E and that's the first one that comes up. It is so cute and there's information there about all of our guests with their baseball card pictures and it's just so much fun. And while you're on the internet, please everybody check out Super Smiley's kindness video. You can help him share kindness around the world if you just Google Super Smiley Kindness Video. That will come up and we're going to have all those links posted on Pet Life Radio on our show page, A Super Smiley Adventure. And before we go, we want to send a big thank you to our producer, Mark Winter, for making this show possible. Mark, you are our super producer. And thank you to our fabulous national sponsor, State Farm. And just real quickly, I want to thank all of our inspiring and distinguished guests for joining us today. And if your dogs could say something, just say one thing. I want to leave with that. Heather, what would your dogs tell us as we sign off? Live long and prosper. (laughs) Of course they would. You Comic-Con fan, you. (laughs) That's right. A nerd. (laughs) Leah, what would Ellie say to everybody? 
Well, in uh, celebrating her train card, she does high fives for friendship. And I feel mm. like that is her way of embracing the connection between pa and him. I love that. High five, Miss Ellie. High five from Super yeah. Smiley way over here. <laughs> Linda, <laughs> Linda what, would Zena, what does Zena want to leave us with? I would say she would say spread the words. Yep, Aww. there you go. And let's see. Oh, Victoria, what about your dogs? What would your dogs want us to know? Well, I think my Sadie would say play, eat, sleep, and love because that just personifies who she is. But uh, <laughs> together, they can say kindness is powerful. Love it, love it. And Luca, what about Jasper? What does Jasper want to tell us before we go? My joke that his motto is work hard, not harder. Oh, love that. Well, Smiley's here napping harder right now. He was super smiley, but he's asleep right now. Ruby, um, that was Jasper. What, <laughs> Ruby, what would Alik want us to do before we go? Alik would want to say, as they do for all of our war dogs, on point, forever forward. Oh, Don't look back. love that. What a great way to end on point, forever forward. Thank Linda, Luca, Leah, Ruby, and very special thank you to Victoria Stilwell for your amazing work with dogs around the world. And to Heather Paul for being such a powerful advocate for dogs through State Farm. We love all of you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Everybody say bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Megan Blake. Until next time, Woof and and Super Smiles. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. State Farm, this is Andrea. Yeah, what if I get into an accident in, say, Accident, Arkansas? Anywhere in the U.S., State Farm has you covered. Uh Uh-huh, and if I hit the only tree in Lone Pine, California? We'll send a tow truck right over. What if I get dinged in Denton? North Carolina or Texas? Uh, both. Then we'll send two trucks. Well played. State Farm handles more claims than any other company. Over 35,000 per day. Call 1-800-STATE-FARM and get to a better state.